Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Jay Jostin, starring in an episode of Mr. District Attorney from 76 years ago, March 13, 1946, and the case of the deadly train. And we thank you for tuning in on this Sunday, 13th day of March. Yes, Friday the 13th came on a Sunday this month. It is the 72nd day of 2022. We have 293 days remaining until we get to 2023. Uh, The planet Uranus. There is another name that people call it, but I'm not going to go there because people think it's going to get the giggles, you know. Uranus, uh, discovered on this date in 1781. I mean, it was out there. We just didn't know it was there. Federal government forbid any Union Army officers from returning fugitive slaves on this date in 1862, thus effectively annulling the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850 and setting the stage for the Emancipation Proclamation. The Confederate States of America reluctantly agreed to the use of African American troops in 1865. The news of the discovery of Pluto telegraphed to the Harvard College Observatory in 1930. Banks in the U.S. began to reopen on this date in 1933 after the presidentially mandated bank holiday. The FBI arrested Jimmy Hoffa on this date in 1957 and charged the labor leader with bribery. In 1961, President Kennedy welcomed Latin American leaders to the White House to call for economic cooperation. I have called on all people of the hemisphere to join in a new alliance for progress, Alianza Para Progresa, a vast cooperative effort unparalleled in magnitude and nobility of purpose to satisfy the basic needs of the American people for homes, work, and land, health, and schools, techo, trabajo, y tierra, salud y escuela. The efforts had mixed results. A young woman, Kitty Genovese, murdered in front of multiple witnesses on this date in 1964. They all failed to help her. It was an incident which shocked the world and prompted investigations into the bystander effect. President Johnson discussed the riots in Selma, Alabama on this date in 1965 and a conversation he had with the Alabama state governor. I met today with Governor Wallace of Alabama to discuss very thoroughly the situation that exists in that state. The governor expressed his concern that the demonstrations which have taken place are a threat to the peace and security of the people of Alabama. I expressed my own concern about the need for remedying those grievances which lead to the demonstrations by people who feel their rights have been denied. Now later in the press conference, President Johnson affirmed the right of people to peacefully protest, but agreed that people do not have the right to yell fire in a crowded theater. In 1991, the Justice Department announced Exxon had agreed to pay $1 billion for the cleanup of the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska. In 1992, Warren Beatty and Annette Benning tied the knot on this date after meeting and starring in the motion picture Bugsy. The way you were staring at me, I thought you were going to ask me for something a little more exciting. Like what? Use your imagination. I'm using it. Let me know when you're finished. After the movie wrapped, Benning became pregnant with the couple's child, born January 8th of 1992, and they married on this date two months later. It was on this date in 2013, Pope Francis elected in the papal conclave as the 266th Pope of the Catholic Church. Passing away on this date in history, President Benjamin Harrison, the 23rd President of the United States, the woman suffrage activist Susan B. Anthony, attorney Clarence Darrow, actress Maureen Stapleton, game show host Peter Tamarkin from Press Your Luck, 
Pro Wrestlers are Arnold Scotland and Test, and boxer Marvelous Marvin Hagler, who passed away one year ago today. This is the birth date of Earl Grey, former uh, British Prime Minister and renowned tea guy, you know, Earl Grey tea. Also, First Lady Abigail Fillmore, musician Sammy Kay, Swing and Sway with Sammy Kay, uh, L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology and best known as a science fiction writer, Scatman John, real name John Larkin, and Rerun from What's Happening, Fred Berry, all born on this date in history. Mad Magazine cartoonist Al Jaffe is 101 years old today, along with Donald Duck, who turns 88. Don't Doesn't duck meat get kind of icky by that age? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Neil Sadaka, 83 years old today. From Fargo and Shameless, William H. Macy is 72. From China Beach, Dana Delaney is 66. From The X-Files and West Wing, Annabeth Gish, 51. From That 70s Show, Danny Masterson, 46. From Shameless and Twilight, Noel Fisher is 38. And from Into the Wild, Emile Hirsch is 37. Those just a few of the people who celebrate the 13th day of March as their birthday. And if this happens to be your birthday... Hi, we're the four freshmen, and we just want to say... Happy birthday to you! From 76 years ago today, March 13th, 1946, Jay Jostin in Mr. District Attorney. That's up next on this Sunday edition of Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. No offense, but are you a little fat when you look in the mirror? How would you like to learn the secrets to lose three to five pounds a week easily without joining the gym or going through any crazy diets? It's called Body Sculpt by Med Diet. For the last two decades, we've been helping people just like you that have pounds they want to shed. We've helped millions of people lose thousands and thousands of pounds over the years. And now it's your turn. Learn the secrets of how to lose weight with one simple phone call. You'll see an amazing difference in a matter of days. Don't believe us? We'll offer you a money-back guarantee. If you're ready to start losing weight right now, call right now to learn more about your risk-free order to Body Sculpt. Call for your risk-free offer. 800-738-5332. 800-738-5332. That's 800-738-5332. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday Classic Radio Theater here on your favorite station. We have very few copies of the uh, early run of Mr. District Attorney, which ran from 1939 to 1952 on NBC and ABC, and, and of course, by extension, NBC Blue. Um, but uh, we have very few copies of those early shows. Most of what we have and we air are from the uh, transcribed syndicated series that ran in 1952 and 1953. And then I stumbled on this one. I, I have hunted for these shows because our district attorney, I should say now our former district attorney here in White Pine County, was interested in the show, and he wanted me to find some copies, and so I did, most of which, as I said, was from the syndicated series. Uh, but now he found this one, Jay Jostin, starring as Mr. District Attorney, uh, from March 13th, 1946, 76 years ago today, and this is the case of the deadly train. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> Mr. District Attorney is brought to you by two famous Bristol Myers products, Vitalis and Sal Hepatica. Vitalis for hair that's well groomed, Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Vitalis, Sal Hepatica. And it shall be my duty as District Attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. The 
The Case of the Deadly Train. Our story opens tonight in the station master's office of a Chicago railroad terminal, just off the main waiting room. I think you know the members of my party, Mr. Billings. And this is Miss Miller, my secretary. Mr. Billings? How do you do? And this is my chief special investigator, Mr. Harrington. How are you, Mr. Harrington? And this is Tom Niles. And Mr. Billings is the conductor of the train we're taking back home, Niles. Go ahead, Niles. You can talk in here. Look, can we get going? I mean, isn't the time to get on the train? He's handcuffed to you, Mr. Harrington? Yeah, that's right. Just a precaution, conductor. This is one trip we're going to be sure to make, huh, Chief? I've told Mr. Billings the importance we attach to getting Niles back home with us, Harrington. I might say again, while we're all here, however, that we'll stop at nothing to make sure of it. I read in the papers how important he is. Going to identify that killer for you in your trial, isn't that it? Yes, Niles has agreed to make the identification. Unfortunately, the newspapers have also printed the fact that he is the only witness I have against Johnny Galena. Mm. That sort of publicity isn't helpful at all. The journal gave it the front page this morning, Chief. Uh, did you see it, Harrington? Yeah, I'll say I did. They hit it right on the nose, too. Said the district attorney considered Niles so important, he came out here personally to extradite him. Hey, look, can't we... Yeah, okay, okay, Niles, calm down. Calm down. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Are you crazy? Johnny Galena's got friends. I need... You think they're going to let me identify him if they can stop me? Oh, they'll ever... do nothing, Niles. You're in my protection now, and I'll keep my promise to you. Is the train ready, Mr. Billings? I've got everything arranged. Sure, you keep your promise. They let me out of jail here to go back with you, sure. And all I get out of it is to be a target. Don't you uh, see, Harry? better get going, Harry. Yeah, right, Chief. Come on, Niles, and remember, when we go out that door, don't look to the right or the left, see? Just follow the conductor here. I'll take them directly to drawing room B. Is that right? Fine. Uh, you have your ticket, Miss Miller? Right, Chief. Bedroom H. I'll get on last, the way you said it. Call me, Mr. Harrington. Let's go, Niles. I'll check with you later, Harrington, as soon as I get to my own bedroom. Passengers holding tickets. Just remember, C.A., yeah, you're responsible for me. Niles, I assure you, you won't be out of my mind for a moment. Not until I've got you safely on the stand against Galena. All right, Harrington, go on. Right. Let's go. You wait a few minutes, Miss Miller, and then board with the crowd outside, all right? Yeah, I know what to do, Chief. Good. I'll find you when I need you. In the meantime, don't recognize me on the train. It's better if we're not seen together. Chief. Yes? You're worried about this trip, aren't you? Frankly, Miss Miller, I am. Niles is my only witness in a trial that means... Well, you know what it means. Sure, Chief. I've got to get that man there to testify. Yes, and in condition to testify, too. So let's hope for the best. Well? They're on the train, all right. The DA's assistant has Niles in drawing room B. Harrington? Is that the name on the orders? Yeah. This picture's in the folder. Never mind, Elsie. It's him, all right. Niles was handcuffed to him. They're in B, right in this car. The DA's with him? He's in bedroom alone. This car, too. Mm, the boy sure worked that all right. <laughs> We're right between them. Oh. Johnny's got money, you know. Why shouldn't he get things worked right? Uh, he will. Getting me to pull this job for him was the smartest thing he ever did. Getting to us, Ben. I come in on that fee. Don't forget. Well, don't you always come in on what I do, baby? Oh, sure. Like that washed-out blonde in the lobby last night. Huh. Oh, I was just a kid, Elsie. Forget it. Forget it? Sure. You leave me sitting in that lousy hotel room for two solid hours, and when I come down, okay, they... Okay, okay. Forget it, will you? We got work to do. One of these days, so help me. Will out. you shut up? You've been hopping about that dame all day. Well, why not? If I hadn't come down for that movie magazine when I did, you'd probably be with her yet. Just a kid. Will you pipe down? We got plans to make. Sure, sure. <sighs> you want the ticket stubs? Huh? The guy collected while you were out. No, no, keep them. I got plans to make, I said. Let's have it. Now, now look. The way I figure it, we... Well? You stop glaring at me. How can I work with you shooting off your face all the time? All right, go on. What's the plan? All right. Well, they're all three on this car, see? Harrington, Niles, and the DA himself. Yeah. The best thing is to get over with it fast, Elsie. see. That way we can get off at Toledo, be back in Chicago before they know what hit him. Back to the blonde, I suppose. Will you listen, Elsie, and get this straight. 
I got a job to do now. A big job. For Johnny Galena, too. The biggest guy in the racket. I know that. Thing. So I don't fool around, get it? Now you shut up and listen to your orders, baby. Because this is one show I'm going to run right. Excuse me, may I get through, please? Yes, certainly. Oh, here, I'll open the door for you. Is everything all right, Chief? Yeah, so far, so good, Miss Miller. The conductor's collected all the tickets in our car, and he reports everything seems in order. Harrington's in the drawing room? With Niles, yes. Uh-huh. I'm going to relieve him while he gets some dinner. In the meantime, I think you might circulate a little, see if anyone strikes you as out of the ordinary. I will, Chief. I was just going into the ladies' dressing room when I saw you in the aisle. Yes, I see. We might try the club car later on, too. You know what to do. Right. I'll wait here a moment until you're out of sight. And if you need me, I'll be in the drawing room with Harrington. All right, Chief. If I can't get back to you without being seen, I'll send a note by the porter. All right, that's fine. And be careful, Miss Miller. Be just as careful as you can. Oh, pardon me. Are you using this dressing table? Oh, uh, go right ahead. Thank you. I'm just going to see if I can do anything with my makeup. Honestly, the way your face can get dirty. <laughs> Isn't it something? <laughs> you're going all the way through, are you? That's right, dearie. Say, uh, you don't happen to have an extra cleansing tissue, do you? Well, yes. Yes, I do. It's right here in my oh, bag. Oh, thanks. There you are. Thanks a lot. Oh, I'm terribly sorry that Twain's uh, train swerved and I must have knocked your purse on the floor. Well, don't worry. I'll no, get here, it. I'll let me. I'll get it, I said. Let my purse alone. But I was only... Never mind. You can have the makeup table if you want it. I'm finished. I'm sorry about your purse. Surely you don't think Keep I would... It. So long, dearie. Uh, uh, thanks for the tissue. Yes, you're quite welcome. Oh, Porter. Oh. Down here, please, and hurry. Here's a seat, young lady, right here. Oh, thanks. You sure it ain't taken? Not if you want it, it ain't. Best seat in the club car, too. Gives you a view of where you've just been. It's exciting, ain't it? That's Indiana. Nothing exciting about that. Oh, I don't know. Ever been in Gary? We just passed through it, little girl. Hey, uh, can I buy you a drink? After a while, maybe. Ooh, I got such a head from last night. I don't think I can look at one. Uh, Gary, huh? You in business in Gary? I'm in business wherever I hang my hat, mister. Yeah? What kind of business? Why don't you guess? Well, let me see. Could be a model, you know. Get the looks for it. Thanks. But you're not. I guess you'd call me a booster. Huh? Always sticking up for the hometown. That's one definition, ain't it? There are others, you know. Like shoplifting. Yeah, so I've heard. Want to trade handles, kid? Mine's Ben. Ben Mott. Hi. Smith. Edith Smith. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Girl's got to be careful, Ben. She can't go around spilling her name, can she? She can if she's out from the wall. Maybe she ain't. Ever been nailed, Edie? By the cops? Yeah, in Denver. Yeah? Where in Denver? In the shed. Railroad station to you. I know the lingo. What was the rat? Boosting? I was doing the hook for the troop. It was a go-back deal, and I end up with the bad man. Hmm. You know the lingo yourself. Uh, St. Paul, you said? (laughs) What are you doing, kidding me, Ben? Nobody but a lamster gives St. Paul a play. This was Denver. The fix was in, so here I am. You know, Edie... Yeah? You're okay. Really okay. Oh, sure. I'm in great shape, I am. What's the matter, bro? I said the fix was in, didn't I? What do you think happened to my fall, though? You, uh... Got any plans, Edie? Oh, the big city. I thought maybe if I spend my last buck on a train like this, I could line up a mark. Who for? Traveling with somebody? No. No, I'm alone. I just thought I'd get in a new troop faster if I ride with a sucker all set. Yeah. You yeah, would at that. You're smart, Edie. You don't sound so dumb yourself, Ben. Hey, um, uh, I'll take that drink now. 
Sure thing. I'll ring the... Oh, wait a minute. Maybe we can go back to my compartment and have a real drink. <laughs> you got a view of Indiana back there? I got a plan, Edie. I think maybe you're just the kid would go for it, too. How's the score? Plenty. Matter of fact, this is a business trip. <coughs> Big business. Oh? I got a partner already, but... Uh, you know how it is. The way my business runs, I need new blood. You know, Ben... Yeah? I got plenty of blood. Let's go back to your trap and, uh, have that drink. Hey, I won't be long, Chief. It's early. The diner shouldn't be crowded. It's all right. Take your time, Harrington. I'll stay here with Niles until you get back. What about me? When do I get to eat? I don't think it would be wise to take you into the diner, Niles. We'll have something brought back here later on. Yeah, I'll take care of it, Chief. Right. Say, uh, is Miss Miller in her bedroom? Uh, she is checking the train. Oh, and it'll be safer all around. Here. All right, take your time. From 76 years ago, March 13th, 1946, Mr. District Attorney on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. The news from 76 years ago follows these words from your favorite station. Are you in bad pain? You know what I mean. Your knees hurt. Your shoulder hurts. Your elbow and back are constantly killing you. And I'm sure you've tried every pain pill or cream available at the drugstore. Am I right? Well, here's something you haven't tried. Pain Magic. Pain Magic is not available at any drugstore. The only place you can get it is by calling the special toll-free number I'm about to give you. And to make things even better, call right now and find out about our buy one, get one free offer. We're so confident it'll work for you that we offer a free bottle with your purchase. No prescription required. Call now to learn how you can get pain magic and get rid of your pain. Remember, your results may vary. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. That's 800-492-8164. Thanks for tuning in on this Sunday edition of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We're listening to an episode of Mr. District Attorney, starring Jay Jostin, as it was originally broadcast Wednesday, May 13, 1946. In the newspapers of that Wednesday 76 years ago, these were some of the headlines. Russia's Supreme Soviet met Tuesday night to consider means of increasing Red Army power amid continuing repercussions caused by Winston Churchill's speech a week ago. In the latest Soviet attack on Churchill, the Soviet author Eugene Tartle warned the Western allies against what he called the fatal path of the suggested Anglo-American military alliance. Tarlik asserted the Russians would not be intimidated by any atomic bomb threats in their firm resolve to guarantee their borders. He said Soviet policy was not aimed at infringing the interests of others. As for the recommended policy of showing force to Russia, the writer in the government newspaper Izvestia pointed out that others, including Hitler, had tried that and failed. <laughs> Former British Foreign Secretary Lord Halifax said yesterday in an affidavit that Hermann Goering would have avoided war in 1939 if he had been able to do so. Asked specifically whether Goering appeared sincere in his attempts to avert war, Halifax answered, I have no doubt that Goering would have preferred it if he could have done it. The question, submitted by Goering's defense attorney, centered around the efforts of a peace emissary, Swedish engineer Burj Dalras, whom Goering sent to London in the month before war broke out to seek a peaceful solution to the Polish-German crisis. <laughs> Secretary of Commerce Wallace said yesterday an atomic energy control bill drafted by a special Senate committee has the potential, quoting, of delivering us into the hands of military fascism. Wallace commented with anger in his voice after the committee voted 6-1 to one to set up a military liaison commission to work with a control commission of five civilians. Chairman McMahon, the Democrat of Connecticut, cast the dissenting vote. 
Wallace asserted that the committee has voted to place control of atomic energy in effect in the hands of the military and declared, quoting, This is an exceedingly unfortunate development. I hope that when the American people realize its significance, they will rise up in their wrath and let their senators know what that action means. One of the leading scientists at the Los Alamos, New Mexico laboratory where the first atomic bomb was exploded declared yesterday that the atomic bomb test in the Pacific won't mean a thing. Dr. S.K. Allison, assistant to Dr. William Oppenheimer, director at Los Alamos, said he had very little faith in the tests. He asked if a battleship is blown up, what does it prove? A torpedo will blow up a battleship also, but that doesn't mean it will wreck a task force or put the Navy out of commission. I think the ship will be put out of commission, but that's all I believe will happen. And then if the ducks are around, their feathers will be blown off. John L. Lewis handed the nation's soft coal operators yesterday his United Mine Workers 1946 demands for higher wages, shorter working hours, and a health and welfare fund for the miners. The UMW chief did not specify in his presentation of the union's demands before the nation's bituminous coal wage conference any specific figure on the amount of wages the miners seek. He also did not set forth the exact change the miners desire in their present 54-hour work week schedule. Also devoid of detail was Lewis's request for the Health and Welfare Fund establishment for the miners. Lewis, in addition to the United Mine Workers' basic demands, handed other requests to the operators. These include adjustments of vacation, holiday and severance compensation, improved safety and compliance with mining compensation, and occupational disease laws. And though some of the day's top news stories as reported in the newspapers of Wednesday, March 13th, 1946, on your radio, Mr. District Attorney, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Say for all around, and you do think somebody might... Now, might... take it easy, Niles, take it easy. Nothing's going to happen to you. I'm scared, I tell you. I was a fool to tell the warden I'd do now it. relax, I said. There's nothing to worry about. Sure, that's easy for you to say. I'm the guy they want to shut up. They won't. I've told you the trial in which you're going to testify means just about everything to me. And so help me, I'm going to see that you do. Send her in to get some food. She? Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you? What's the matter, Ben? She cramp your style? You wouldn't, would you, Edie? What do you think? What's the job, Ben? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, not so fast, lady. Let's see who you know first. Well, uh, let's see. Did you ever hear of uh, Swede Larson out of Cincinnati? Point out, man, yeah. Kugler? Runs a cannon mob and shed. Well? How about a big boy, Edie? Say, like Johnny Galena. He's standing a rap, ain't he? Won't be a rap if Tom Miles doesn't identify him with the trial, you know. Yeah, that's what I heard. What would you say if I told you Niles is on this train? And that's the job, Tom Niles? Maybe. <laughs> you must be big yourself, Ben, doing a job for Johnny Galena. I'm big enough to take care of you, Edie. The two of us for a long, long time. Ben, I... Why, you louse. Elsie, I thought you were in the diner. Yeah, I bet you did. Well, that ties it. It's her. Look, Why, you poor fool. That's the dame I was telling you about. Huh? She's the one gave my purse the once over in the ladies' room. What? Why, that's true, but I... I told you you'd make a false move, Ben. Now you've blown it for good. Sit down, Elsie. Let's straighten this out. Yeah? You think I'm nuts? She's probably got the train swarming with cops. I'm getting out of here. Sit down, I said. And stay for the rap? What kind of a fool do you think I am? Now, wait a minute. There's been a mistake. I'll say there's been a mistake, dearie. Him. I should have pulled out long ago. I warn you, Elsie. Sit down. You let go of me, you shoot diamond bum. I'm going to see to it that you get yours once and for all. Elsie, put that gun down. I knew she had a gun in that bag. That's right, dearie. Now, here's where you get off the joyride, Ben, and right into the arms of the law. Look, honey, calm down a minute. A minute, my back is turned. You know that ain't true, Elsie. I've always come back to you, haven't I? Yeah, you've always come back. 
But that's not good enough. Look, Elsie, this dame don't mean a thing to me, and she's not hooked up with a cop. She's a booster out of Denver. That's right, Elsie. I'm not after your guy. You keep out of this. Elsie, look at me, babe. I love you, honey. You know that, don't you? Don't you? <gasps> oh, Ben, if I could only believe you. You know me, baby. Why, I'm all for you. Always have been. Oh, uh, come on. Come on. Let me have that heat. Oh, Ben, if you'd only play square with me. I get all riled up like this, and I don't know what I'm doing. That's my girl. Now, let me have the gun, Elsie. Here. Here, take it. That's right, Elsie. <laughs> Thanks. You see, Ben, I... Uh, oh, don't. Don't. I haven't even started on her. Pull a gun on me, will you? Ben, no. So you're going to let me have it, won't you, Elsie? Huh? And with a rod, too. Nice and noisy, so the whole train can hear. I didn't mean it, Ben. It was just my temper. Yeah, well, I do mean it, kid. I'm through with that loud mouth of yours once and for all. Ben, no. Look out, Elsie. He's got a you knife. You keep out of this. Come on, Elsie. Here's where we say goodbye. Ben! Uh, oh! You, you killed her. You... It's like we said, Edie. You blood for old. Now, come on. Let you and me straighten this out. Yes, but... You've got just... questions to answer, little girl. And while you're talking, just keep your eyes on this night. see what your district attorney makes of this in just a moment. March 13th, 1946, Mr. District Attorney, on this Sunday, Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Are you suffering with arthritis or osteoporosis? Do you have diabetes? Did you know that these are just two of the hundreds of diseases that have seen improvement with Dr. Wallach's incredible longevity products? You can't get them at a health food store. The only way to get them is to call us at 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. Do you have heart disease, fibromyalgia, or high blood pressure? Do you have a terrible time losing weight? Dr. Wallach can help. He was a veterinarian and cured diseases in animals. He felt that he could do the same for humans, so he became a physician. Over 50 years of research and helping people like you goes into every bottle of Dr. Wallach's amazing discoveries. Do you want to feel better? Learn how to treat the cause of your problem rather than covering up the symptoms with drugs. Call 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. On Monday's Classic Radio Theater, Gerald Moore as Raymond Chandler's big character, Philip Marlowe in The Adventures of Philip Marlowe from 72 years ago, March 14th, 1950, and The Vital Statistic. A lady silk merchant is strangled with a pajama sash, and watch out for that very tough lady in slacks. That'll be coming up on Monday's Classic Radio Theater. But right now, the conclusion of Mr. District Attorney from 76 years ago, March 13th, 1946. Now back to Mr. District Attorney. I'll take another look through the train, Mr. District Attorney, if you think that'll help. Yes, I wish you would, Mr. Billings. I can't understand where she is. I told you something would happen. I knew it. Pipe down, Niles. Hey, Chief, you sure Miss Miller ain't in her bedroom? Positive. Suppose I have that look at the other cars. Will you be here? No, I think I'll go back to my bedroom, Mr. Billings. You'll find me there. She'll turn up, I'm sure. One thing, she can't get off the train. Dear Chief, I don't like this at all. You ain't seen her since she started back for the club car? Before dinner. <laughs> Did you hear the conductor? He said she couldn't get off the train. Well, she couldn't. It must be doing 70 through here. She could get pushed off, couldn't uh, she? Ah, that'll be enough of that, Niles. I'm scared, I tell you. You promised to take care of me. Shut up, Niles. Shut up. You're all right. Oh, I'll go back to my bedroom, Harrington. I don't like to stay in here with you too long. You're right, Chief. We'll see what the conductor's search reveals. And if he doesn't find Miss Miller... Yeah? Then we will, Harrington. I promise you, we will. Yes, come in. 
Oh, come in, Mr. Bennett. She's not in sight, Mr. District Attorney. I cover the whole train. I see. But this turned up. Yes? It seems a young lady gave the porter a note for you before dinner. Miss Miller? I think so, sir. Yes? Here, it's written on the back of a ticket stub. Let me see it. The porter had been warned about this car, you see. I told him myself to be careful. See. You say she gave him this note before dinner? He held it, sir. He was afraid to deliver anything without checking I'm with me. I'm going to get out of here, Conductor. Which way is compartment G? To your left, four down. Wait for me. I may need your help. Oh, excuse me, will you please? May I get through? Take it easy, bud. Just let me get out of your way. I'm sorry, but I'm in a hurry. You sure are. Thank you. Excuse me, please. I've got to get through. <laughs> Tell you, you can't stop people like Johnny Galena. He'll do anything. Oh, look, Nile, you've been whining ever since we left Chicago. Will you shut up? Take off my handcuffs, Harrington. Chain to you this way. I haven't got a chance. Look, for the last time, my job is to protect you. Do you understand? These cuffs stay, kid. You and me, real cozy like. I'm scared. Yeah, you said that. If I were you, I'd. Hey! Hey! Look, hey! Mr. Wright! Hang on, Nile! Hang on! Let go! Let go! Shut up, shut up. There's no need to get in a panic. Get me out of here. Get me out. Uh, oh, I can't move either, I tell you. <laughs> if you ain't hurt, just shut up. Hey, listen. Hey. hey, they're coming in for us already. Do you hear them? They must be using the axe. Yeah, we're all right. Just, just get this beam off us. Uh, you in there, Niles? I'm pinned. I can't move. <laughs> Keep coming. I can see the light where you broke the side. <laughs> Keep coming. You, Harry, good. Where? Keep coming. Through the side, see? Through the side of the car. Don't worry. I'll get there. <laughs> Just take it easy. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. Who are you? You'll find out, Harrington. <clears throat> so you're pinned, are you, Niles? Harrington. Uh, don't get panicky, Niles. Wait till I reach for my gun. Just stay where you are, and I'll, I'll take care of you. Harrington, it, it's Ben Mott. He's going to kill me. I remember him from Chicago. I can't, can't reach my gun. I oh, want this beam if I could only push this beam off me. Harrington, you said you'd protect me. There you are. Just a minute now, and I'll be there. Harrington, look, he's got a knife. <laughs> hey, drop, drop that knife. Drop it, you hear me? Uh, sure, I've got it covered. Uh, right in your little pal here. No, my dog. So you thought you'd turn that on Johnny Galena. Huh? I, I warn you, I'll, I'll do nothing, Copper. Oh, I just lie you, there till I finish with him. No, no, uh, Ben, please. Please, one Ben. One more push, Niles, and I got you, uh, that dirty rat. Harrington, help me. Help me. I can't. Wheel on Johnny, would you? Here's where you... Oh. Harrington. Oh, Chief. You all right in there? <laughs> I can't see over this body. Yeah, you got him, Chief. It's okay now. Well, just lie quietly, Harrington. We'll be through to you in a minute. Right. Hey, Niles. 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 Niles, are you all right? I... I'm all right. He's dead. All right, men. Let's cut away this beam. Oh, Chief. <laughs> Chief, that was close. Hey, get some water, Miss Miller. Right. There's a doctor out on the tracks. Well, I'm okay, Chief. Was There's any... no one dead or hurt, Chief. This is the only car that went over. The train hit an empty truck on the road. Oh, good. Miss Miller, where did she... Well, it's quite a story, Harrington. But first, let's get you and Niles outside. We've got a trip to finish, you know. All right, men, let's go. Now, here is your district attorney. Well, I want to say first, ladies and gentlemen, that Tom Niles went on the stand in my prosecution of Johnny Galena, and because of his testimony, we were able to secure another very important conviction in our war against crime. Yeah, I still say that was close, Chief. If you hadn't been right behind Ben in that wreckage, he'd have killed Niles, sure. 
Chief, I think you'd better explain just how you knew Ben was making his way through the wreck to Harrington and Niles. It was your note that did it, Miss Miller. The note the porter delayed delivering until just before the wreck. When you were in the ladies' dressing room with Elsie, that started the whole thing. When her purse fell, Harrington, I noticed it was heavy. Mm -hmm. Too heavy for an ordinary lady's handbag. Oh, she was carrying a gun, huh? I'll say she was. Fortunately, when I picked up the bag, her compartment receipt fell out. I wrote the note to the chief on the back of it. Yes, and as soon as I got the note, I went immediately to that compartment. As Miss Miller had written, the occupant seemed suspicious. <laughs> That's a mild word for Ben, Chief. <laughs> After he tied me up, I thought I was done for. Yes, yeah, so you found Miss Miller in Ben's compartment, huh, Chief? Yes, Harrington, and Elsie's body. Miss Miller told me Ben had started for you, and so I followed him. Fortunately, neither of us was hurt in the wreck, and Ben managed to get out of the car first, but I wasn't far behind him. Boy, am I glad you stayed on his tail. Oh, hey, Chief, what about next week? Well, next week, ladies and gentlemen, our story concerns one of the most unusual and interesting criminals in our files. It's the case of the dangerous clown, and I invite you to join us for it. And until then, thank you, and good night. The names of all characters in a night's dramatization are fictitious and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Our stars were Jay Justin in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Vola as Miss Miller. The music was under the direction of Peter Van Steeden, and the authors were Edward Byron and Robert Shaw. And remember, Vitalis for hair that's well-groomed. Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Vitalis and Sal Hepatica. Two famous Bristol Myers products, which each week bring you Mr. District Attorney. You know, one of the things that I pride this show on is that I bring you more than just what we used to call playing the hits. We go a little deeper on this show and bring you some of the greatest radio shows that you never heard. We do those sometimes. Mr. District Attorney is one of them. Yeah, it's not top of the line, great, superior, but you know what? It's a really good show. And you heard it here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, and I hope you enjoyed it. Mr. District Attorney, March 13, 1946, 76 years ago today. Thank you so much for tuning in here to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. A reminder, many of the shows you hear here on Classic Radio Theater are available just as they were, totally uncut and then free of commercial interruption if you go and contact my friend Ted over at radiomemories.com. Uh, at radiomemories.com, you'll find that Ted has shows available not only on cassette, CD, flash drive, However you want them, Ted's got them. Contact him, radiomemories.com. That's radiomemories.com. These shows are absolutely free of charge. Uh, if you miss a day, you do not have to miss a single show. You can find them uh, at iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, TuneIn, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Amazon, or my webpage, classicradio.stream. All you have to do is search those other places for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. That's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. You can also contact me through our webpage, as I said, classicradio.stream. You can find all of our social media information there as well. Classicradio.stream. Please thank this radio station. Support their advertisers. It's their kindness and courtesy that allows us to be with you each and every Sunday at this time. And tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. <laughs>